but the deliverables don't get done by themselves. It is people that are doing the job. So if you're not taking care of the people, what makes you think they're going to be uh, giving you the best result on investment? If I don't take time to understand what you need in order to go do the job, it's like having somebody who's uh, right-handed working with uh, tools that are for left-handed. Is it going to be able to do it? He could, but it would take a little more time and maybe get very frustrated and throw that wrench away because it's not working. Exactly. So understanding that, I have to be there to assess what is required for what situation, and it will be it would be in the short term as well as the mid to the longer term, and that's part of my relationship, my, my responsibility to be invested in that relationship and understand that my role is to be there to support you, because I cannot want something from them and not give them what it is that they need to make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. So what about tips for getting people engaged? Because I also think that we have, as a culture, as a society or whatever, we've had bad management for so long and a lack of understanding. I think there's a lot of employees out there who are like, I don't trust my manager. I don't, I, I, they're going to be used. They've got their guard up. Mm -hmm. Does that uh, yeah. How do you break down those barriers and let people engage people and truly let them know, Hey, I am here as an intermediary. I am here to go to bat for you. Mm -hmm. I'm here to get you the skills, the tools, the coaching that you need so we can create this together. I think it's about being honest with the staff. It's about letting, explaining to them what is your role, but also be curious about what the, the, the staff believe is their role and what they bring to the conversation. Most of us don't want to be at work and feel like uh, I'm just a hot body on a chair. I want to feel like I'm using my competency. I want to have a sense that I can still make some decision, that I have a sense of autonomy. I'm an adult. We're adults outside of work. I want to be an adult uh, in, in, in at the work as well. And then doing something that, ha that is meaningful from a perspective of what am I contributing to? What's that bigger picture? Again, if I'm spending that much time every day at work, I want to know that what I do makes a difference. And if I can't see what it is that I am creating or part of, it makes me feel like I'm wasting my time. It's like asking somebody to uh, put gravel, move it from the right side of the house to the left side of the house. When it's all on the left side, you ask him to go do the same and bring it back to the original. So they're going to ask, but why am I doing that? So if you don't have something that makes sense, they're thinking, uh, I don't see the point. I might still get paid, but I still don't see the point of what I'm doing. And that's the part. Nowadays, most of us, most of us evolve in a knowledge environment. It's a knowledge industry. So everybody's thinking, everybody's using their, their uh, competency, their skill set, their rational thinking, and then you're making them do things where it makes no sense. So my role is to create that sense of understanding, to validate what it is that each of them think they want to bring to the work environment. And because most of them are knowledge workers, sometimes I'm managing people that are more intelligent than I am or are experts in some areas. Have to acknowledge that too. I like that you said that because you're absolutely right. Um, it is a knowledge environment and there are a lot of experts out there and a manager doesn't mean that you are smarter than your employees. No, the sum of us are always going to be greater than the individual. And the sum of us is because we all come in from a different perspective, different lens. And as we combine our different expertise and knowledge, then we come up with solutions and options that each of us individually might not have considered. So it's in that sense, harness the potential, figure out what it is that it will, how it is that it will be applied the best way possible would always make your people feel more engaged than feeling that they just small dots on the board. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
how does it work? And this, this was just my experience. I was a lawyer in the corporate environment. There's, I was a corporate attorney, not, mm -hmm. not a law firm attorney, mm -hmm. but there's some weird competition between sometimes I have to be the one, I have to be the one, I have to be the one. And I a hundred percent agree. We all have our strengths. We all have our expertise. It is better to have collaboration. Um, do you have any tips for helping people get over that? Because that's, that's for, in some industries, I think that's harder. I would have to say um, what helps oftentimes is understanding what is the greater picture, the bigger picture, what are we trying to achieve, and then helping people see what each of the other team members bring to the conversation. And what we know now is that what's going to get you to be, a be the best leader potential is not what's going to get you to uh, be the best uh, knowledge expert. So the idea is for most of the challenges we're experimenting nowadays in the work environment, there is not a one size fits all in terms of solution. There will yeah. be things that we have to look, there's maybe three or five options, which one would be the best here and why? And that's where coming from different, different angle will allow us to see the value that each of us bring to that conversation in identifying the best way forward. But that's the job of the manager. I'm meant to create the sense of relationship with my staff. Then I have to also create that sense of resonance within the organization so that he, uh, within the team with that individual so that he understands how I feed into the various pockets of the larger uh, mandate and also who do I work with. So it's create rapport. It's not just about me having a great relationship with one staff. I have to help them feel comfortable with the other people they're working with because only then does it become a team. Otherwise, you have a group of people together. You don't have a team. And when you have a group, everybody plays for what, what they call their team, which is me. Yeah. When we bring it to the group, then there'll be a to the team, then there'll be a different set of decisions because we understand that bigger um, a goal that we're trying to achieve and I'm willing to maybe step back on this one because this other person has the, the option or the solution that would work best and I know that there'll be another option, another situation or maybe what I bring might take, okay, so I might look like I have the limelight on me but it's still a team effort. Mm -hmm. You know, as you were saying that, I was um, self-reflecting a little bit. Uh, listeners, you guys don't know this. Paula and I chatted a little bit about this before the show. But right now, I am doing a huge home improvement project with my mom. It's a family relationship. I do what I'm good at. She does what she's good at. We're not micromanaging each other and saying, do this and do it my way. And here's. It's a very easy flow. And I was just reflecting on how most of us have that easy flow with friends or family, yet at work, traditionally we step into this weird Lots. relationship, yeah, where that emotional connectedness, where it's do this because I say to do it. And it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems to me you're bringing in this whole emotional connected piece that is just common sense. This is, this is how we innately and intuitively do things in every other environment. Why have we not been doing that in the work environment? I totally agree. And this is it. It's common sense. And I said, uh, this is a sense where I'm currently working on a book, which is, I haven't figured out a title yet, but it's about bringing the common sense back to work and harnessing the humans into the, the structure. Because sometimes we pay way more attention to the computers, the, the chairs, the environment, the, the building, and then we ignore the people. But the funny thing, all of that doesn't do anything by itself it's the people that will make everything else connect and as humans we need that connection I need to know that when I'm interacting with this other person that there's that uh that sense of uh 
some, something that brings us together and not just I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, but more the sense of I'd like to do more with you. I love what you bring in as it's going. I never thought about this and not feeling as though it's going to be a challenge. And it's like being in a family. Uh, when you have one baby and he's getting older, he's a toddler, maybe he's now three or four, and he's had the whole space just for himself. And then you're bringing a second child. They're like, what's wrong? What, what, why weren't you just happy with me? It's not that I'm not, we're extending the family, but I have to teach you how to get, uh, to build that relationship with that other human being. And in the work environment, we take it for granted that it's gonna happen miraculously. You just drop people in the same room and they all become friends. Yeah, no. But it doesn't work that way. Our little, he, I don't know what he's going to take. I don't know how I'm supposed to act. Is it good to say this or not good to say this? Uh, I, should I mention that other thing? I don't know. And that doubt create that sense of distance and that sense of discomfort. We've all been at one point to an okay, to a, a party or somewhere and felt like, oh, I wish I could be home. I wish I could be home until somebody comes along, starts talking to us and connect with us on what feels like a personal level. Yeah. So, same thing in the work environment. And me as a manager, that's my role to facilitate those conversations. I have to create those uh, moments where people will get together. The funny part I always uh, say is that whenever we're into family, whether whatever occasion, it always involves food and maybe some kind of uh, liquids. Well, leave it as liquids. And the thing is, there's a, a certain uh, level of fellowship when we're around and we're sharing the food, the conversation, and just um, partaking in, in being in an environment. As a manager, I have to do the same. So I have to create those opportunities, whether we go out for a break, whether we go out for a meal, whether we just decide we're at work, we're having lunch, let's play a puzzle, whatever it is. But it's my role to create that sense that people can see themselves as human being and not as a potential task holder. When I'm done, I give you this, you go do that. But more as like, how can we work best together? Yeah, I like that. And it seems like that kind of, and I love that word, fellowship, that fellowship, that communion, then it seems like you would have a better opportunity to realize, oh, you know, this person over here is more of a visionary. Oh, this person is more detailed oriented. Oh, this person can motivate other people. And then you would be able to utilize those gifts and those strengths so much better. My sense is that we are each given different gifts and talent and we'll bring that those in the work environment and oftentimes they're not even recognized. So if I'm good at IT and I'm an IT technician, it's as though nothing else matter but you being the IT technician. I'm a human, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a sister, I, I'm, I, I'm, I go to church or I uh, play in a choral, whatever, a choir, whatever it is, I do other things. So it's not just, we can't keep the conversation just on the strict work conversation, we have to get to the personal. Doesn't mean I have to tell you all of my warts and challenges, but it's this part where we can talk on a more a spontaneous level where you can mention, oh, I was at such and such a store and I saw this great sale, you should go. It's not work related, but it's say, oh, we have something in common. I too like that color and I too like that style. And you think it's a, that's a great idea and that's those things and that's it's those innocuous rapport that actually allows for the team to gel together. Yeah, yeah. And in the beginning of the interview, you talked about the amount of time we spend at work. And that's also the difference between waking up on Monday morning and going, oh, God, yes. not again. <laughs> or, yes, I can't wait to see Paula because I watched the greatest movie and I just can't wait. I to just got to tell her. Yeah. And by the way, for most people, it's not the morning, uh, the Sunday morning, the Monday morning that's difficult. They start feeling the difficulty of having to go back to work as of midday on the Sunday. So, uh, so when you don't like your job, trust me, you wake up in the morning of the Sunday and you're already thinking, oh, tomorrow will be. And that's the part. 
you don't make for a happy person when you're like that. Nope. And it doesn't make for a great work environment uh, when people come in and they're already dreading coming.